Hello everyone and welcome to the build video of the Valkyrie Nitro version. It's a teamwork with me and Stepan at MJet Development. We worked on a jet ski project and you can find the electric version on his channel. But if you want to build a Nitro version, you've come to the right place. There's a lot of stuff to talk about and I'm going to go quickly over some of the details. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask them down below. Without further ado, let's get started. First thing first, you're going to have to get all the parts you need printed. I suggest that you use a material that has high impact resistant property because the nitro engine vibration might cause some crack in a brittle plastic over time. I also suggest light color as a dark material would absorb a lot more heat from the sun and might deform if left unattended. Anything but black essentially. As a side note, let's talk about the pump itself for a minute. It's a MJet 35 pump and there's already a great tutorial on how to put it together on the MJet development YouTube channel. So I'm not going to cover that to keep the video as short and as concise as possible. The instruction and the material needed to make the pump are not going to be in this video. I'm considering you already have built the pump and now you need to build the jet ski. Here's some of the parts that you're going to need to complete this boat. Two 5x15x6 by by oil seals. I got mine at VerySeals.com. A liquid cooled nitro engine with a crank start. This is a Force Marine .32 I got off of AliExpress. You might need a clutch nut or a clutch adapter nut. If your engine doesn't have a 5mm output shaft, so I put one here in the link if you need one. A nitro tune pipe, I use the Savage tune pipe, this is a plastic one, but you can also use an aluminum one if you prefer. You need a 5mm to 5mm flexible coupler some 1 8 silicone couplers. You might consider having an engine manifold straight piece, but you could also bolt the coupler directly to the engine if you prefer, but the extra length is gonna give it more low end torque, so that's actually a good thing. A 10 by 300 millimeter aluminum tube. You can also use a carbon fiber tube if you prefer, a transmitter and receiver combo, two waterproof mini servos, a gas tank off Amazon, this is 75 millimeters, but you can also use Sullivan tanks if you want a bit more capacity. Silicone fuel lines, medium size. You're gonna need a few brass insert M3 knurl style. These can be found on Amazon and a bunch of places, but make sure you use the knurl type, they're the best. You're gonna need a blank PCB material, or you can also use G10, but PCB material is often a lot easier to find, and it's a great material to hold the engine in place. A 3 millimeter or 1 8 rubber seal. You're gonna need about 2 to 3 feet of that. More is always good. That's for the seal around the seat. 4 40 quick length with rod. These can be found on their Dubro website or most hobby shop have them. 3 Traxxas pipe couplers. These are very important. We're gonna talk about those a little bit later. A 4 millimeter tube or 5 30 seconds. Uh, KNS makes them. You might need a brass screw hook to hold the snorkel in the front of the boat. If you have a better solution, you can also do it, but this is what I used and it's been working awesome. And of course, if you want to, you can also add a few stickers in the mix. Whew, that was a long list. Let's quickly go over the tools that you're gonna need. With all these things ready, we can start on the body itself. We're not gonna glue the hole immediately, because we have a lot more access now. So we're gonna put the brass insert and seals in place instead. To put the brass inserts, it's best if you line them up first and then slowly let the heat bring them down. You do not wanna force them in, let the heat do the work. Some of those have a very odd angle, so make sure your soldering iron doesn't touch the sides. Take your time and do it well. Almost every surface has inserts, so make sure you don't forget any. The seat and the middle section also have a few inserts in them, so do them now while your iron is still hot. Now to install the oil seals. Be careful with these, as they can easily get damaged. Push them slowly into place while making sure you are applying an even and flat pressure. It is recommended that you put the spring side towards the interior of the boat. Now that this step is done, we're gonna prepare all the parts for the epoxy. First, get the four millimeter aluminum tubes and cut two lengths of 15 to 20 millimeters of it. These are gonna be our water nipples and they need to be glued in place. The left one can be a little bit shorter because it is a tight squeeze around the fuel tank. So it's okay if it's a bit shorter. 
We can also prepare the M5 bolt and nut. Those are gonna hold the seat in place once everything is together. It is preferred to use a 5 by 20 millimeter grub screw, but it's often easier to just get a bolt and cut the head. You can then simply epoxy it in the hole or drive it in with a drilled chuck. In my case, I had an imperial bolt, so I did the same process with the epoxy, but you get the point. Now it's time to bond the three sections of the chassis together. I recommend that you use 15 or 30 minute epoxy, as the 5 minute epoxy is curing a little too fast to my liking. I'm used to it, so I can work with it, but a 15 minute epoxy would be a lot better. Also, a towel or a rag are a must to wipe out the excess. The best way to apply it is to make a very thin coat on both surfaces and then press them together. You want as little material as possible while making sure you have a complete coverage. It took me roughly 3 minutes to apply them well on both surfaces and another 4 minutes to put all the screws in. So you can see how tight the time is. Having a drill with some extension on the hex driver is going to be a huge time saver. Just make sure you have it set up before you start to glue it all. It might be a good idea to have somebody else help you as well. Once all the screws are in, take a towel and wipe out all the excess, both outside and inside. The faster you can do it, the easier it is going to be. Once you're done, you can start working on the rear section. You repeat all the same steps, but this time it's going to be a bit more difficult to put in all the screws. So that's where a ball drive is really going to help you. Also, don't forget to remove the epoxy from the seal groove. Once you're done, you can mix a third batch so you can glue the nipples, screws and bond the seat pieces together. For a good sealing surface, the groove has to be in line with the two sections. So consider leaving the screws a bit loose and try to put it as close as possible. And then you leave it all to dry overnight. It is the next day, so we're gonna start right away with installing the rubber seal. I have tested all kinds of glue to hold this. The best results I had were with some everyday CA glue and this ultra gel CA glue. Don't use epoxy or any other types of glue, they might not hold as well. Start at the top and apply a very thin continuous bead on the track and gently push the seal in place. Use your finger to gently guide and push it in. Don't use a tool like a screwdriver for this. If you put a small amount, your fingers will stay dry. Also, don't stretch the seal or compress it. Just let it find its spot by itself. That part usually dries pretty quickly, so let's keep going. The motor mount uses this PCB material. To make them the proper way, you simply print the plastic guide and you use a box cutter to score the surface following the holes. It's best if you make it a little bit bigger first, so you can slowly grind it down to its final size. Once you are happy with the fit, you can use a 1 8 inch drill bit to make the mounting holes. Once the two parts are done, you can use stainless steel hardware and locking nuts to fasten the engine to it. If you are using an engine with an electric remote start, you might need to use the extended PCB cutting tool as it will be easier to install the engine in the bolt later on. And that's what you end up with. Make sure that the four mounting bolts line up straight and they are tight. Okay, 30 second break. We need to talk about the engine. When I got the engine off AliExpress, it originally came with a marine flywheel. I wanted to save a bit of weight so I went with the Traxxas aluminum ones. You might notice that the output shaft is not 5mm. But that's not a problem, because you can easily get these 5mm adapter nuts. Traxxas offers some, but I got mine at artattacksnomobiles.net. I will leave a link if you need one. But even with the new part, it was still a little bit too long, so I had to grind it down on the belt sander. I could have used a different engine altogether to solve that issue, but this was the simpler option. So that's the solution I went with. And that's why my engine might look a little different from yours. Now back to the boat. Next up, let's work on the exhaust. 
you have the option of using a plastic HPI Savage pipe or an aluminum one. For simplicity and lower prices, use the plastic one, as it only requires a screw to hold it in place. I happen to have a sweet aluminum pipe and I want to see how that works. And it uses a grub screw and a wire to hold it at the tip instead. I then installed the silicone Traxxas elbow to the pipe and then attach the carbon fiber tube to the muffler using zip ties. Having them installed as a single unit will help me locate the right spot for the pipe. You can also use the engine at this step to make sure everything is lined where it needs to be. The first wire I made was a little too short, so I had to bend it back and forth a few times. Once I was happy with the fitment, I made a new one without any defects. You can use M3 screws and washers to mount the whole thing together. Like I said earlier, if you want to use the plastic pipe, all you have to do is use the plastic attachment and use a M3 bolt to hold it down. You're gonna need two mini waterproof servos. Unfortunately, I didn't have any waterproof ones left, so for this installation, I'm using typical Metal Gear ones. But I know I'm gonna have to replace them because they will fail otherwise. The steering one uses an adapter to control the linkage. Use either a round or a plus shaped servo horn to fasten the adapter using two M2 screws. I forgot earlier to install a brass insert, so I had to add one more. Now you take the servo bracket and you fasten the servo in place like so. You might have to adjust it later on using the splines, but as a rough indication, make sure the brass insert is in line with the peak of the edge of the servo. We can now add the screw to the assembly. We can also add the throttle servo in its spot using a M3 screw. To mount the battery in place, we're using two zip ties. I use a 2S lithium ion battery off of the Yamaha Viper, but you might use different batteries. With that part done, we can finally install the tune pipe. It's easier to install the silicone tube right now while you still have easy access to it. This is probably the most difficult part, especially if you have big hands. To seal the muffler tip at the back, I'm using a silicone piece that was cut off of one of the Traxxas elbows. To install the silicone, you push it in a hole about halfway through, and then push a 10mm tube through it from the interior. It will squeeze the silicone against the hole and provide a good seal. You can also use a full-size elbow to bring the muffler underwater to reduce noise. I might install a complete elbow later, as it also prevents more water from going in the pipe. We can finally install the engine. Make sure this flywheel is tight. We can then add the coupler while making sure we add some Loctite to it. This red piece on the coupler was really tight, so I shaved it up a bit so it would be easier to disconnect in the future. To be perfectly honest with you, I have never tested this kind of coupler. So I'm just hoping everything is good and it doesn't slip on the output shaft. If it is a problem, I'm gonna let you know what the fix is in the comment section down below. Maybe gluing the shaft before we crimp, maybe adding scuff marks on the shaft. I guess we'll just have to see. When installing the engine, make sure you're using lock washers on the screws because it will get loose over time. Now for the fuel tank. This is a 75 mil fuel tank that I got off Amazon. It drains pretty quickly with a big bore engine, but you still have a few minutes of fun with it. If you want bigger capacity, you can use Sullivan tanks mounted over the muffler, but I like the convenience and easy access of the gas cap. Now the fuel line going to the carburetor is a different color. That's because I really like the Traxxas fuel lines as they are easy to see the fuel in them and they last a long time. So here's all the part we need to add to complete the interior. We have the battery, the throttle push rod, the receiver with its battery cable, the snorkel. This part is optional, but if you end up with some sort of water in the bottom of the boat, it will be a lot more difficult to flood the engine with this. It uses two Traxxas elbows, zip ties, and another 10 millimeter tube. To hold it up in the front, I'm using a small brass hook. You can also use a little heat shrink on it to protect the tube, but that's not necessary. Then we also have this muffler spring, which I kind of forgot to put on earlier. We also have this optional clip on the fuel line. That's mainly to prevent it to drain in the exhaust pipe when you're transporting it. That's not the necessary part. We have two zip ties for the muffler silicone 
and want to hold a receiver in place. If you are using a receiver dry box, now would be a good time to install it too. All of those parts are pretty simple to install, so let's do it the easy way. It's that simple. Everything is where it needs to be. Everything is working as intended. You want to make sure your carburetor fully opens on a full throttle and fully close on their full brakes. It's the only way to stop the bolt if it runs out. So make sure that is working well. Also now is a good time to do a final inspection of every screw to make sure you didn't forget to tighten them up or put a locking washer. If you did, you might end up finding loose screws at the bottom of the bolt later on. That was the most difficult part done. Now all we need to do is install the pump and finish the exterior parts. Stepan has a great video on how to put this pump together, so I'm going to refer you to this one. You can find the link in the description. It is a very detailed video. So there is no point in me making another one saying the same things. I am <clears throat> also missing a few parts to complete it, so um, oops. The video has already been a very long one. The only thing left is to decorate it and paint it. But I've already done all of those steps in decorating this other model that I did just a few weeks ago. And I'd rather not wait for a complete paint job to dry so late in the season. The summer is on its way out and I want this video live sooner than later. Talking about paint, I did a prototype not too long ago in a testing and I clear coated the interior of the boat. And it just left a complete goo as the nitro breaks it up. Epoxy is perfectly fine though. If you want to paint the underside of the boat, I think it's a good idea as it looks sweet and it's not in direct contact with the nitro or the sun. You can also add a few stickers to improve the look, just make sure you wash the surface properly before you apply it. If you do decide to build this jet ski, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it, please send us a photo or a video on YouTube. We'd love to see what you did. With all that being said, thanks for watching and thanks for running with us.